Hello and welcome. In my last video, we tested the Aframango plug with a fluorescent light bulb. We noticed that we could influence the breakdown voltage by using an acrylic rod. In the meantime, I contested many tests for my members and have now in series a vacuum tube connected where I use gas, liquid vapor, and graphite sheets and investigate the flashing performance. I have now four fluorescent light bulbs connected in parallel to the vacuum tube in series. This is causing random flashing of them which I can influence with the acrylic or acrylic rod. In the first test I have a capacitor bank of 50 nanofarad connected. Because of the quick breakdown voltage, the measured voltage does not exceed 1.5 kV. My examples, my samples are placed on a laboratory object carrier made of glass. A small ferret magnet is connected on a button which allows me to move the test material in the tube by using a magnet outside of the glass tube. The flashing distance to both electrodes is always the same but depending on where I position the sample material, the flashing frequency changes. This is not intuitive because the distance does not change. The flash is creating an impact on the surface of the graphite sheets and releases material which reminds us on sparkling candles. Let us have a look now at the demonstration table. Here on the demonstration table we see the couple components. You can probably see, not to great extent, but I have behind the vacuum tube which is in front, I have four loose light bulbs connected in parallel and they are connected in series to the vacuum tube in front. So I use as a power supply a, a flyback transformer. So you see this little black, black um, device here on a, tape, uh, on a table in front of the um, um, stand of the vacuum tube. This is a 3 to 6 volt high voltage um, flyback transformer and this produces um, the energy required. However, in normal tests or in small tests, I don't require more than 1.5 volt, maximum 2 volt, but we can go higher up for higher frequency. So the left side uh, of the capacitor bank, the blue ones are ceramic disc, 20 kilovolt and 10 nanofarad, all collected in parallel. And on the right side, the long strip are film capacitors, one microfarad film uh, capacitors and five connected in series. And of course, with a shunting resistor as a safety measurement in between. We currently see the sample placed here in the middle of the vacuum tube. And um, I'm going to zoom in later in that you can see that better. So we measure with a high voltage probe on the side and a DMM, uh, which is currently running on DC, battery DC internally. We measure the high voltage, uh, which is at a, at a moment available on the system in DC and the power supply is on the left side which powers the little black device. So the pressure varies so I will not go to, um, great into the details but the pressure is a rough vacuum between 30 and 10 millibar. So we have various materials inside so I go briefly to Two examples here. I will show you here this one example with this capacitor bank, and then we're going to use just only liquid, which uses uh, water vapor, but also borax inside. Um, the color might not be that visible, but it's a it's a bluish purple color, but it might not be that visible on the camera itself. It goes in a in a bluish white form. Um, it will be displayed, but we're going to see if I if I can get it as natural as possible. So we're going to dim the light for that as well. A warning here at that point, this video contains flashing images. Those of you who are sensitive to flashing images, please stop watching this video. I move over now to the demonstration table and we'll start with the experiment. So I'm now at the demonstration table and I have currently the 50 nanofarad ceramic capacitor connected here to the four fluorescent light pipe which are in the back. 
At the moment you see it because I conducted some tests, it's a little bit blurry here. It's steam inside because I have an, in the middle of this object carrier, I have two graphite sheets on either side and placed a little bit of liquid with borax in the middle. So that has been evaporated and that changes also the color of the fluorescent or let's say the flashing light. So we have the rod I have here and we start with the experiment. I will then assume, uh, uh, put the light, we'll, we'll dim the light for it and we start with the experiments and we're currently at 2 volt. Let's do that now. So we see that the bottom fluorescent light bulb is illuminating. And if you increase in the voltage, we get the flashing. So it goes in a random fashion now in the back, as you can see here. It doesn't stay, but this randomness can be influenced with the acrylic rod. If I keep it here, for example, on the bot, I have it more on that side, but I can go up and down here and keep it on the bottom side, or the bottom is very not often on, but they got go like that, top. Now, the other uh, aspect I was talking about is if I move the sample, let me zoom into the sample a little bit. So if I move the sample to the earth side, to the cathode, then the frequency increases. But the power requirement is still the same. If I put it on the other side, the anode, it stops or very, very slow. Not intuitive why that is. So what I can um, recommend, you can see nicely the sparking now. I will zoom in later on, see if I can put a little bit up here so that you can see it like that. If I put them higher up. So I would normally increase the vacuum here a little bit based on the um, exploration or let's say of the expansion of the gas. And I will do that in a second. I have now increased the vacuum back down to uh, 10 millibar. So we have an easier sparking and we have an easier flow. Some of so of course of the steam has been evaporated. So I'm at 2 volt again. So I start that up now. And I can see it's right away flashing. And can increase the frequency. So we see some kind of light spots on the edges and here we can see the big sparks are coming out and here it goes a little bit in the corner here on that side and I move it again you can see the nice sparks coming out here getting shot off the graphite material on that side if I go on the other side much, much slower. Put it back here. Slower, see if I can capture some of the pictures where you can see the sparks in more detail when I zoom in. So what I'm gonna do now, I connect now under that circumstances the a larger capacitor bank. So I have now connected the large capacitor bank which has 200 nanofarads, so it's four times bigger. Of course the frequency will be lower, will be much lower, but also it will be interesting to see the spark will look different. There will be more expanded and we have more um, 
exposed features of the Spark's functionality. Let me energize. So it starts fairly slow. I have to increase here the voltage. And you can see we don't have really straight ones. We have also the random positions to a certain extent. So I see the color yellow, I see very red, and I see bluish. So they have all kind of different colors. I can see here. And we can see that the fluorescent light bulb here in the back is the bottom one, which comes up. If I can see if I change that up to the top one, if that's possible, let's see that. I need to get a little, little bit more power. See if that works now. Now it goes here. Now come here. Stays here. It stays here. Goes now on top. Goes back to the bottom. So the sparks are much bigger, they have more a gas aura around it. A very reddish purple flare comes from both of the sides and I have orange inside as well. So various gas are excited on the peak or on the position of the electrode. I have a bluish light. If I increase it. Looks like that. I try to focus in on that as well. So sparks are very, very big. See if I can put that down. Comes like that. It's slower in the... Able to see that. This voltage method is 3400 volt before it sparks through. Stop that for a second. I have decreased the vacuum um, back to 10. So we're losing a little bit. And I put it up for the last time. Now it's we're getting warm, we, we can see that. The flashing is quite nice, but... of a starting point because now here in this vacuum I will test various materials how they behave under that circumstances. Thank you very much for watching and if you want to see more details please join me on my members website. Thank you very much and goodbye.